Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Today we are going to have a, a rehouse of one of the real popular spiders, but for very mixed reasons. And that is the Pteranoculus murinus, or commonly known as the OBT. Now, um, we picked this one up here from the Central Show in London, and um, we, we got it mainly because it's a rather large one, and we don't see them normally of this sort of size. This, this is a big OBT. Now, we've already got a couple in the collection, but they're nowhere near the size of this thing. So um, we decided we'd go for it. Now, the interesting thing was, when we, excuse me, we got this from Portsmouth Tarantulas, and they wasn't 100% sure of the sex of it. So they priced it accordingly. And... Um, they asked us to have a look to see what we thought, whether it was a male or a female. So we transferred it over into a clear tub and we had a little look. Now, normally you can see with a spider of this size, you can clearly see the epigastric furrow. And it's really, really obvious. With this, it wasn't. But everything points to it being a female, but we still couldn't see that epigastric furrow. So we put it back on the table and thought, well, you know, we're going to have to just take a chance. So the camera lady went back a little while later to see if it was still there. And sure enough, it was. So she picked it up and uh, we brought it home. So we're going to give it a chance and hopefully it's going to be a female. Now, we've had spiders before that we thought actually look like females and then they've molted out and they've become males. So just because you have a largish spider doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be female. And we see a lot of this on... Um, on the um, on the Facebook groups and things like this, people put up pictures of their spiders because it's large. They say it's a female. They try and sell it as a female. It's not always the case. Just because you've got a big spider does not mean it's going to be a, a female. So bear that in mind when you're picking up. You want a molt. You want a sexed molt if you're buying a specified female spider. Or you do what Portsmouth tarantulas do, and they put this up with a price tag reflecting the fact that it might possibly be a male, or you could be lucky and it could be a female. So it's reflected in the price, which is a really, really nice touch. It's a good thing to do. Um, so that way you can't really lose. If it does become a male, how hard shakes is it? You paid more or less for a male, a little bit over, not a lot. If you get a female, then you paid under what you would have paid for a female. So you quids in. Right then. Now, another thing with these, we have, in the past, we've done videos on these, and we've always housed them arboreally in taller enclosures. Now, we've taken a bit of flack over the years because we've stuck them in our arboreal enclosures. Everyone says they're a terrestrial spider. Well, they are, in the strictest terms, classed as a terrestrial spider. But these guys will web up up to two feet off the floor without any issues whatsoever. And the reason they do this is because they, li they live in the bottom of the shrubbery. So if there's a bush, close, low-lying bush in the ground, they will web up into the branches and they can end up two feet off the floor without any issues at all. They will also burrow as well. So although not strictly an arboreal spider, they are, have been known to web up way above the floor. And so this means that we can, as a hobbyist, we can play around with that and we can either keep them arboreally or we can keep them terrestrially. Today, we're gonna to set this girl up in more of what we would class as a terrestrial type setup. Although it is gonna have a bit of a mix to it. There's gonna be access for her to go from the top or the bottom. It's all down to her, what she wants to do. So we're gonna do it in a 30 by 30 by 30 cube. This is a Komodo here. It's a top opening one, fully meshed top opening. And uh, all we're gonna do is fill this with Beastie Mix. Now, the reason we've gone for this enclosure is because we like the design. We like the open glass here. It's nothing to do with it being a top opening um, enclosure. We have front opening closures for our OBTs as well. Now I can hear some of you gasping, thinking, oh my God, I wouldn't have a front opening enclosure with an OBT. They're not as bad as you first think. Once you get to understand them, they really aren't that bad. Although they must be treated as individuals. Every now and again, we get one. We might have one here. We don't know yet. We don't have the box. But we might find out she might be one of the more defensive ones. Or we've had them before where we pulled them out and they come out like puppies and they just walk off nice and gently. All depends on the spider. 
Right, we're going to fill this up with some soil. Um, so what we're going to do, we are literally going to fill it with some beastie mix. Now this is our, our normal stuff that we collect. This is mainly leaf mulch, a bit of soil, but there's no fancy mixture here. This is purely stuff that we've collected. Now sometimes we can we can mix them up, do different things. But it's not really necessary in this case. This is going to dry out. It's quite damp at the moment. It's just moist. It's not it's not wet. As you can see, it's not wet. It's just got a bit of dampness to it, which is fine because this is another thing that we often see with the OBT. People want to keep them bone dry. Now, we found that although they like a dry environment, they will actually take a quite a reasonable amount of moisture. So we're looking at sort of 60 plus percent in moisture and it doesn't do them any harm. In fact, they actually really like it. So it does a lot. Yeah, and this is like moisture within the soil, which will give us the humidity within the enclosure. Yeah, so there's no need for it to be bone, bone dry. What will happen here, because we've got a mesh top, this will in fact dry out. Now it's out in the open air, it will dry out. But then what we can do is we can moisten this down again when we want to add that little bit of moisture. We do exactly the same thing for our GBBs and they come off really well. They look really good on it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this, all we got is a couple of bits of cork bark. We're gonna keep this fairly simple really. And we're gonna literally put a piece in the corner like so. Got a couple of other bits here. We don't need to. So we're going to give it options. So it can either go in the top here. This thing, don't know if rock, it's terrible. It can either go in the top here and web up this, which is what many of ours do. They tend to use the backs of these corks, or it can come up under here, it can do stuff like that. It can do whatever it wants, to be honest. But what we're looking for really is giving it options. We can put this bit down here. It can get underneath here should it decide it wants to go in a more of a, a um, terrestrial style thing. We're going to have a water bowl over here. Now this water bowl will get moved around as she redecorates this enclosure. And that's because she will, without a doubt, cover it in web and it will be lost forever. So we're going to literally, we're going to fill it up now. So what we're doing really is we, we're basically setting this up and just providing a few anchor points that will encourage her to make her home in them areas. Eventually though, in time, this whole thing will just become a web and we'll end up losing these pieces of bark, they'll disappear. But what they will do is they will form the tunnels within that web. So as we look at it now, We've got a home here that it can go behind here. We can also go down in here. It can get under this piece here. It can come through here, through the back here. It's got many, many options in which to sort this out. So the chances are when we put it in here, it will just disappear and um, probably hide up underneath here. If we're lucky, she'll sit out on the top here and we'll get to see her for a little bit, which will be really, really nice. It'd be nice to get some close-ups. Now, you remember that um, these guys do have a bit of a reputation, and they're one of the one of the spiders in the hobby that um, create a real stir. You know, people get very excited about these guys, and it's because of their defensive attitude. They are an old world spider, and they are a baboon species. So. Generally speaking, with all of the baboon species, they are relatively quick to defend themselves. Now, we can change that defense by how we deal with them and how we operate them around them. So that being said, we are going to transfer her from this box into here, hopefully without any issues. This doesn't mean to say that it's going to work out that way. It can go either way. Now, um, when we're looking at, we'll take what we'll do is we'll take the lid off now so you can have a look at her while we're in there. Now we've got our catch cup down the side here just in case we need it, just in case she decides to go 
on a bit of a walkabout. So we'll leave that there nice and close to hand. Now you can see this absolutely beautiful colouring and you get the idea of where they get the, the name, the orange bitey thing or the OBT. I mean, look at it. Now I would suggest that this is quite quite an old mature spider just by the fact that it's, it's so heavily built. And this is what happens as they get older, they really thicken up. I mean, that abdomen is lovely. It's a huge, big abdomen. And you can see there's a bit of difference in coloring here. You'll notice as long as we don't touch her, she's not likely to react. You can see the markings in the legs, the black stripes in the legs. Very, very impressive. Really is a very cool spider. Could we just put maybe a little bit of light on? We can try a bit of light and see what happens. We can, um, they're not generally that worried by light. There we go. You can see now where she's really probably starting to pop. The carapace, you can see the lines through the carapace. Looks really smart. And you can also see there as well in the colours, the difference in the colour is the way the light. Down on the first segment of the leg, it's very orange, and then it goes almost pale, almost like a peachy colour. Really smart. Now you can see here, this is the, the box that it came in. This is just a transportation box. So this is quite often what you will find your spiders in at the shows. Um, and it just makes it nice and easy to move them around and it keeps them safe as well. So this is what it's been living in for the time being. And um, there's no harmship. In, in this, in being in a, in a short, short space of time, it doesn't affect your spider in any way. And it's perfectly safe. You can see there she's webbed the whole thing up. There's also a water bottle under there somewhere. And she's webbed that to the bottom as well. And this is what they tend to do. They web everything up. Right, so then, shall we try and move her and see what kind of mood she's in? Because we don't know what she's going to be like. So what we're going to do, here's a little word of warning. We've taken the lid off and she's on the table. Now it's very tempting to literally just go straight in and pick this tub up with the lid off. That's not always a good idea with a spider like this. So what we're going to do is we are going to put the lid back on top until we pick the box up. Now the reason being that as soon as we, we put that back on there like that, we know she's safe, she can't go anywhere. The minute we pick this box up, vibration tells her that she is on the move. And the last thing we want to do is pick it up and then her bolt out up our arm. She'll be sitting on our shoulder like a parrot. We'll be sweating profusely and um, it won't go well. So what we do is we pick it up nice and gently. You know, see, we're nice and careful. We're very, very gentle. And you see there that she's not actually done anything. But we're not taking any chances. Now then, what we're gonna do now is we are gonna move to here. This is where it gets awkward now because we've got to try and get in there. So what we're going to do, we're now going to take the lid off. Now because we're tilting this downwards, her immediate reaction is to come up the top. So what we're going to do, because it's a defensive spider, we are going to touch her at the back. Most people would be tempted to touch her from the front, where she will react. If we touch her from the back, she should react and turn and face the paintbrush. That's the theory. So what we're going to do, we're just going to touch her leg. Very, very gently. Now you see that. Now this has given us a little cue as to how she's going to respond. She's being very, very gentle. We don't really want her coming up the box. What we're going to do now, we're going to change it around. We're reading our spider all the time. And we're hoping that she's going to stay lovely and well behaved. So now we're going to get our contact again. There we go. No notice there. Absolutely no threat posture whatsoever. So that is a rather, rather large OBT. And don't she look fantastic on that piece of wood? 
absolutely awesome. Now you can see there now that she's come out and she's stayed in a very, very relaxed manner. Now this is because of the way that we made contact with her. So we didn't just jump in with a paintbrush and give her a poke, you know? We came in nice and steady and we literally just brushed her, um, her leg very, very gently with a paintbrush. So to, to all intents and purposes, it probably just felt like a, a blade of grass disappearing or rubbing up against her. You can see them big thick legs on her now. Very, very impressive. Really, really impressive. And as you can see there, as long as she's behaving the way she is now, we don't need to worry. She's being very, very calm. She's just having a look around. She's not causing us any trouble at all. Now, by doing that really, really gentle, soft approach with a paintbrush, we've maintained a happy spider. So we've done, we've done what really these guys, have, they've always got this reputation of being highly defensive. And I think we've shown there just now that by us treating them in a very calm way, we can in fact move them around without this defensive posture. I mean, she is as happy as anything. Very, very relaxed. Absolutely awesome. Now, the way we've set this enclosure up is we've set it up in a way that we're looking forward to actual breeding prospects. So when we, when we set this up, we're looking at getting our male, when she webs this up, she's either going to come out of this point here or she's going to come out of one of these points down here. You know, So when we put our male in, he will have optimum amount of room in which to maneuver. And then should he need to, he can literally just climb straight out of this enclosure. It won't be an issue for him at all. She is looking absolutely beautiful. I do believe I must get a photograph why she's still looking really, really good. Oh, no, I don't want video, I want a photograph. There we go, look at that. These are often the best times in which to get your photographs is when you first rehouse them. She's been an absolute stunner. Here we have it. The Terranoculus murinus. Even that name sort of shouts a bit of trouble, doesn't it? Now we might be able to see the epigastric furrow, which is here. And it's a little bit more evident today. We can just see that black mark. That is the furrow there. So this should, in theory, be a female which is good for us because we took a chance and that chance has actually paid off. Now you can see how well they can hang on the glass. Now one of the things we often get asked is how do they climb the glass? They've not got feet like geckos have, so it's a different sort of thing. But what they do have is they have tiny, tiny claws in the ends of these toes. They have two claws in the end of each toe. And Focus on here first, okay. and then we can move. So you can, um, and they literally hang on to the slightest imperfection. And you can see where we've cleaned the glass, you can see where she's struggling a little bit to hold on to it. But she's still managing to do it. I mean, she is a big, heavy spider. But she's managing to do this. And this comes up to another thing that we often hear about with terrestrial spiders in enclosures. Now, there's a, a sort of a common belief that, um, you know, if you've got um, a terrestrial enclosure that is, say, 30 centimetres or 35, 40 centimetres high, the higher you go, you shouldn't really have terrestrial spiders because there's a fear of them falling to the floor and damaging themselves. So to get around this, people end up filling the enclosure halfway with soil and then they fill it up with other bits of wood and other bits and pieces until they've only got this much room between that and the roof. And then they feel happy that their spider's not going to fall. This shows these spiders 
can climb really, really well. We also have the full mesh top, which we use on all of our enclosures. And I guarantee you, she will climb over the top of this as well. It's not gonna be an issue. We don't have issues with mesh tops. We've never lost a spider or damaged a spider to a mesh top. Um, again, it's one of them things that's gone around the hobby and it, and it does the rounds. And um, some people cry out in uproar about mesh tops and others don't have any issues at all. Now, I think one of the reasons that um, it's been a constant thing within the hobby is because, yes, that probably over the years there has been occasions where spiders have got caught in the mesh or they've fallen from the roof and landed on the floor and they've done themselves some damage. But when you work it out, these are probably, you know, one in a million times that that, that ever happens. But the problem is, is people jump on it and they make it far bigger than it actually is. We've been doing this for 40 odd years. We've never lost a spider yet. So I think it speaks for itself. So now we've got this done, we're gonna leave her be and um, hopefully she is gonna web this all up and it's gonna look really, really impressive. If you want a heavy webbing spider, the OBT is a, is a cracking spider to go for. In terms of management, because of the way they behave and they can be defensive, they can be a little bit naughty, once you've got your spider set up and it's in here, there's no reason for you to ever be in here. You know, so you're not really under any threat. The most we need to do is actually change its water bowl and things like that. And as we've shown before, once she sets up home in whatever space she decides to choose, the chances of her coming out to do anything is very, very slim. So as long as you're careful, you will be absolutely fine. Now we're gonna put the, put the top back on this now. She's been so good. You can see how steady they can be. Absolutely beautiful. So there we go, we're just gonna slide that on nice and gently. We don't wanna upset her. We don't wanna make her jump. That's it, she's in there now. Where is she gonna go on the roof now? Look, we're gonna find out. We... Nope, she's gonna settle down there. Now this is something that we will often see with many of our spiders when we rehouse them. And we get asked an awful lot of this. We, I've had so many people with questions about this very thing, about I rehouse my spider and it's sat in a corner sulking. Now some spiders, when you rehouse them, some will disappear and hide immediately. Others will stick their head in the soil with their bum in the air, and as far as they're concerned, they are hidden. And they sometimes will sit like that for two or three days. And it's nothing to worry about. You know, as we see here, this spider is in very, very healthy condition. It doesn't matter if she sits with her head in the dirt and her bum in the air for a few days. It's not gonna make any difference, don't worry about it. It takes some of them a little bit longer to settle down. Others will disappear. You won't see them again for a couple of weeks. The best time, if you're really worried about your spider, turn the lights out, give them an hour or two in the dark, and then go back and check them out with a torch. And nine times out of 10, that spider that you think hasn't moved for two or three days will be on walkabout and it will be doing its thing and it'll be investigating what's going on. So have a little bit of faith. They don't do everything that the textbook says it's gonna do. So just bear in mind, it's a living creature and it, it does its own things for its own reasons, some of which we don't understand. So just have a little bit of faith. As long as it's in good condition, it should be fine. Right then, well, I hope you enjoyed that. What a wonderful spider. She is a very, very pretty spider. I'm so glad we picked her up. Really pleased. Why right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you again soon, guys.